What's up Simonix? Welcome to a very special episode because this episode is actually number 50 of our developer vlog. That means you as a regular watcher of this vlog have seen 50 episodes and I have created 50 videos like this and edited videos like this to my very own surprise. But we are today not only here to celebrate 50 episodes, we are also here to celebrate... A very special number five and that is a major ionic release so today once again we will make a quick review of everything that happened during february and the beginning of march in terms of ionic content ionic updates everything related to this and of course if you're new to this and not yet subscribed make sure to hit the like button and also stay subscribed for ionic tutorials videos like this so here we go All right, let's go through all the updates in the Ionic universe. Let's start with the Ionic Academy. Since it's already March, we got actually two new courses. So the February course was a continuation of the previous Firebase Marketplace course. And now we have a course on Stripe payments using Firebase Cloud Functions. I'm really proud uh, of this course since this is stuff that I haven't seen in a lot of places uh, before. It's actually using uh, the new SCA compliant payment flow of Stripe. It's a bit more complex than it was before, but we can do everything with Firebase Cloud Functions, with callable Cloud Functions. So this is really a course I'm very proud of. Besides that, there's also a new course now uh, since March on Nest integration and especially using sockets with Ionic and Nest. So this is not really specific to Nest, more likely to Angular Ionic stuff uh, on how to use sockets, but we're building a live voting system so people can vote on different things. Uh, we'll go a bit through the API and also use capacitor along the way. That's everything for the courses, but of course we also got a few new quick wins if you haven't seen them. So in the last video, uh, some comments were that it's really great to see a quick recap of everything that happened and that's what I want to give you of course as well. We have a quick win on uh, how to build an Ionic HTTP loading interceptor and retry logic. A very interesting thing that helps you to basically implement retry behavior and also to manage your uh, loading indicators in one specific place using a bit of RxJS logic. So it's not really super advanced or expert stuff, more just a bit intermediate. But if you can go through this and integrate it, it will really make your app life easier. Also new, of course, how to upgrade your app to Ionic 5. As I said in the beginning, version 5, major release. We will also get to this a bit later when we get to the official Ionic stuff. Um, I got a quick, quick win. Um, so I think that's the idea of the quick win on the most important areas of how to upgrade your app. You can either go through the quick win or watch the video which covers all the important elements that you have to take care of once you upgrade to Ionic 5, but more on this later as well. Another quick win uh, that's pretty new is uh, on one of the things that was deprecated with Ionic 5, so how to upgrade from the event API. If you used this in the past, it is no longer with Ionic 5, so you have to switch to something else and RxJS works great and can be uh, used quite easily to replace your previous logic. Also new, uh, a little success story on uh, one of my members called David. Um, I really liked his story. He's created two applications. One is more likely, I think, an enterprise application. I can't really uh, use it, but he also created a progressive web app that I think I haven't uh, reviewed yet. Um, so it's for first responders using codes, uh, helping to find people uh, out in, I'm not sure where he lives. I completely forgot about that. The United States are pretty big, so. Uh, anyway, I'm really happy that members of the Ionic Academy create projects, apps, uh, progressive web apps like these to really help out other people. And of course, if you have created any apps, always let me know. You know, I make a regular app review and I'm always looking for new apps. Besides that, last item for the Ionic Academy is we have a new landing page that kind of still needs a bit of love, I guess. <laughs> so. Um, I think in the previous video we talked about the redesign in progress. The redesign is now finished. I think it's a lot clearer now. Um, it has some shadows, really a lot of white space 
And I found a great designer on Instagram who immediately jumped into this and built this. So I'm really happy uh, about the new UI. There are some elements that I might improve. If you find anything uh, or any improvements, just let me know. Also, not really related to the new design, but in general, we got about 100 plus new members this month. Uh, so kind of like the last month, uh, again, a very good month. And I hope with this new landing page, I can perhaps attract even more since I really, I really enjoyed this UI a lot more than the previous UI. Now on to more projects. Uh, I think I also talked about this quickly. So my App Store kit got a little, um, well, let's call it not really redesign, but some improvements. So this tool helps you to create screenshots for your iOS applications faster. If you've gone through the process, you might know that it can be kind of complicated. And with this tool, you can easily define your text, your colors, and now you can also use a gradient for your background color. And I also added the ability to use one of a few predefined images. In the future, I might also add image upload. And there are also a few other elements like drag and drop on my list. And thanks for uh, not loading yet. Uh, not sure what's wrong. I guess I still have some open issues. But this is one of my private projects that I continuously work on and I still think this is a valuable tool, although not a lot of people have used it yet, but I will work on this. I also added a preview where people can see the images if it's actually working. I guess I just crashed the server. But of course, that's, that's, the, that's regular if you present anything. Oh my fucking god. Moving on to the next side project, Kick of Ionic. We talked about this in the last vlog. Um, it's a very early prototype. I would love uh, to get your feedback on this. I already got a few responses. Um, it basically helps to kick off your Ionic project for now with Firebase. You can create entities. Um, you can later also get some layout, automatic authentication or theming and then simply export your project to your email. You will get a ready Ionic project with Firebase completely connected with services, interfaces, details pages, list pages, everything for the entities that you've defined. I really enjoyed this project and it is an early version, so please um, be kind with me. I still need to work on this, but I want to get your feedback on how to make this exactly the tool you need to kick off your Ionic project. Last project, Ionic Jobs. As I said last time, it's now free. I got a lot of email signups. Actually, I haven't found a good rhythm to send out emails, so I haven't sent out any email yet. Um, but I will do this perhaps on a weekly basis with all the new uh, jobs from a week. If you want to post a job, it's free. If you're looking for a job, just go ahead and browse the available jobs. There are actually two new jobs on the official Ionic company, so really interesting stuff. Moving on to, in case you missed it, from the DevTactic blog. Two more posts, or three, I think. First one, how to build a progressive web app QR code scanner. Um, really interesting topic, which is uh, not using any Cordova and I think also no Capacitor. So that's really just using JavaScript and you will see how powerful JavaScript has become uh, today. So take a look at it. Also new, how to set up universal links. Uh, that's been a topic that's kind of complicated in the past. So. Uh, you have seen this in Amazon apps. If you get an email from Amazon, click a link to a product. And if you have the app installed, it will automatically open inside the app. It's a pretty great behavior. And actually you can easily implement this with Ionic. Uh, if you follow a few of these steps and if you don't make any mistake along the way, uh, but that's actually very likely. Also new is, um, a quick write up of how you could create an email list with Firebase. Actually, this is the procedure I used for the Ionic Jobs email integration. Um, it's just using a very simple email service called Sandfox, which offers an API to add subscribers and also Firebase, uh, which is used to keep your private keys private and callable cloud functions and interesting things. Go ahead and take a look at it. If you want to check it out, one of these go to the DevTactic blog. Now, moving finally on to the official number five release of Ionic. This release is really great. It has uh, especially a lot of UI changes, I would say. So it's most likely a new UI design change update. 
and I actually heard both opinions. So in general, it should be an easy upgrade because um, Ionic uses web components since version five and there haven't been a lot of changes to your real code inside your views, the elements, all of the names basically stay the same. I also heard from some people that tried to upgrade to Ionic 5 and had a lot of troubles, uh, a lot of issues around TypeScript packages, anything uh, really strange. Um, perhaps also related to updating to Angular 9, which is definitely something that might be more complicated. Um, but normally the update to Ionic 5 is something that's really simple. So this is nothing like the update you have seen from 1 to 2 or from 2.3 to 4. It's really, it's really easy normally. Really easy. There are just a few uh, things to watch out, which I've covered in my quick win. So of course, go through it if you haven't. And otherwise, really, you should go to Ionic 5. There are a lot of updates uh, in terms of the iOS design, things that you normally see in native applications now, but they are now also available to your Ionic apps. We got these cool uh, card layout models, I would say, on iOS. Um, different menu overlay, refreshers. Uh, they updated the starter templates with a lot of uh, information. They also got uh, new APIs, more on that in a second. And of course, also, since this is the big uh, video with a five, so 50 episodes, five is great. Ionicons 5 is also out. I love Ionicons since uh, they were introduced in the beginning. It is really a super easy way to get nice icons in your uh, Ionic application. And if you check it out now, you will see that they now come in three different modes, outlined, filled, sharp. And for all of them, you can now easily define which icon you want to use on which platform. Better and better and better. It becomes really uh, super easy to customize your applications for both platforms or use the same icons for both platforms. And also the new icons are really, I don't know, I just like them. So they're an updated version of the old icons and the old icons were good the new icons are even better. Ionic 5, Ionicons 5, everything is great. Also, something finally new is uh, the new package of the Ionic CLI. Previously, you had to install simply uh, the global package Ionic. Now they moved this package to add Ionic CLI, which is more in line with all the other packages at Ionic Angular or at Ionic React. You should definitely go for the new version of the CLI. It works completely the same like before. I actually, uh, it took me like two hours to get this working, but most likely because I used a node package version managing tool and everything was messed up and I couldn't uninstall Ionic. So I hope for you, this will be easy for you. Normally you just have to run those two commands and Ionic will work completely the same like before. I also hope this is not confusing for you since we're on Ionic 5, but the CLI version is 6. So there's really no trouble. This is not Ionic 6. This is only the CLI package number 6, just like Angular is now version 9. All right, we're already way too long in this video. So just a final outlook on the next topics for the next time. I'm going to work on a WordPress API course for the Ionic Academy. I will release new tutorials around the new APIs of Ionic 5, which are the animation controller, the gesture controller, perhaps also the, the modal. I'm not sure about that yet because it's a rather small part and I will see if there's anything else new for you to cover. Also next month when we do an update like this again, I want to keep you updated on the certificate survey that you have perhaps been part of. So I asked all the subscribers about uh, if they're interested in Ionic Academy certificate program. And it turns out the response was um, a lot of responses, a lot of great responses. So I will share this with you in the next time as well. And perhaps we might also take a first look at a project that I call the book. So um, I already started working on the application behind the book. I haven't started writing yet, but so far I really like the application and I think this is something you're gonna love. So maybe next month I will share the first details about this new project. I have no timeline since I have a lot of other things also going on, but this is something I wanna keep you updated about as well. 
All right, that's it for the updates from the Ionic Universe. Actually, there are always more updates than I think. Everything that is going on, there's really a lot. So I hope you enjoyed this condensed roundup of everything going on in the previous month. And perhaps we will do this next month again to update you about everything relevant. Finally, once again, a very special thank you for watching and sticking with me for 50 episodes now. I hope that we can uh, still grow this channel to 100k one day that is my big dream and you can of course help me with that goal so keep your ideas recommendations apps for app review everything coming i really enjoy the conversation with you and i hope you enjoyed this video format as well so have a great week of awesome code enjoy your code and happy coding simon